so now on to the last segment of the ICA, the C7 or the communicating segment, which extends from the uh, posterior communicating artery origin to the terminal bifurcation into the anterior and middle cerebral arteries. Let's take a closer look. But before we go, let's before we do, let's just go back and quickly take a look at our, our real circle of Willis to see what we're looking for. So remember, this is our cavernous segment, right? And as the carotid comes up here, we can see it comes up and it gives off. So we have C6 right here, gives off that uh, uh, posterior communicating artery, which is going all the way to the PCA, the posterior cerebral artery. Um, so it becomes the C7 segment and then it comes up and it gives off the ACA medially and the MCA laterally. And as it enters the dura, um, actually, let's go back for one second. Uh, as, as the carotid enters the dura, it's turning yet again. So we have, we're coming back up, distal dural ring, and then all of a sudden, we're going back on top of ourselves. So we're coming almost directly posteriorly, slightly laterally. So this is our course and until we form the ACA and the MCA. So we're going to take this view. Let's flip it upside down and see that. So here we are, here is the carotid, right, coming up and forming the MCA and the ACA. Let's skip ahead. Okay, so now we're gonna zoom in. So now our frontal lobes are here. Let's just orient ourselves since we've flipped again. Um, this, is in, this is inferior. We are anterior looking posterior. Um, and these are the frontal lobes that are being retracted superiorly. And of course, when I'm speaking about anatomical terms, I'm referring um, to the uh, I'm referring to the um, anatomical orientation, not our orientation. So, you know, even though this is down, this is in a superior direction that they're being pulled. Um, so, what we're looking at is we're looking down into the anterior skull base. So, this is the anterior skull base. This is our pituitary gland. This is uh, the pituitary stalk. Um, and we can see the ICA coming up underneath that second nerve, like we saw before, coming up and terminating into the MCA and ACA. So this, this is our first nerve. First nerve has a very simple straight and direct course. It goes uh, from its origin all the way down to the cribriform plate, and that's it. It's, unless you have a meningioma here, not really con that common to interact with. And then for the second nerve, uh, we have the optic chiasm here. So we have the left optic nerve and the right optic nerve going into the optic canals and then into the orbit. So as we follow the ICA up, we come to that fork in the road. Um, we have our medial road. We can either go uh, medial or lateral. So if we go medial, uh, we join the anterior cerebral artery which comes pretty much on top of the chiasm or the lamina terminalis, which is that kind of clear membrane part over here, posterior to the chiasm. Uh, and we come and we course upwards and we form our A1 segment. And then we have the other side that goes lateral, which is the middle cerebral artery and the M1 segment of the MCA. So here we have that same image, but the clivus, has been removed. Same perspective. And if you think about what we're really looking at here, this is the entire so-called circle of Willis. Let's look at that 2D uh, image again. Does it look like anything you're actually looking at here? Not really, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's incredibly challenging to try and understand this, whether you're seeing it in surgery or you're seeing it on angiography or on on, uh, on any type of scan, uh, it's very difficult. This is actually uh, our basal, our vertebral artery here. This is our basal artery. This is our carotid coming up. This is our uh, the first segment uh, entrance into the uh, carotid canal. So our C2 segment coming up. And then we can see our cavernous segment after it comes in, immediately courses up is our cavernous ICA coming up and it's exiting, entering the dura right here, it comes up. So going underneath the second nerve, coming up and giving off the MCA and the ACA. This gives you a slightly better idea of what uh, we're looking at here 
um, in terms of this image, you can see this is this is real, this is now in an anatomical position. Superior is up, inferior is down. Here's the brainstem, all bone removed, um, and here's the posterior circulation and anterior circulation, and you can see that here as well. Posterior circulation, anterior circulation. Okay, so um, this. Uh, image may be familiar to some of you. This is um, a textbook presentation of a, of a right MCA infarct, uh, otherwise known as an ischemic stroke. Um, and the reason uh, you see it, and it looks this way, um, is because the MCA supplies the entire hemisphere. So when you have an infarct that's stopping blood flow, it's essentially lights out, depending, obviously depending on where the infarct is, but if you have it low enough on the MCA, um, you can get a, a true a lights out of the whole uh, affected hemisphere. And we can see that here. Um, and we can see as, let's take a look at the carotid again. As we come up, this is the carotid right at the very bottom. We're coming up from into the carotid canal. That's our first genu of the C2 segment. So we're inside the petrous bone. You can even see this is, this is angio, right? So it's, it's x-ray, it's fluoroscopy. You can see that this is more uh, white than this segment because this is bone. So this is the carotid canal. It's coming in and then it's exiting the carotid canal here. You can see it becomes darker and more clear right here. So this is the opening of the carotid canal. Frame and lastrum is right here. It's coming up. This is probably where the petrolingual lingual ligament is. It's coming up. And then the reason it's not flat, we, we see too, is because remember we said that inferior bend of the cavernous segment kinks out ever so slightly laterally. That's why we see something that's thick and not, because this is an anterior posterior perspective. So if they were perfectly in line, it would look like one single vessel to us. But because they're not perfectly aligned, you do see that anterior bend a little bit more. So it comes back up, the, the illustration's a little more clear on this one. So it comes back up um, uh, and then it goes through the uh, proximal dural ring, exits the cavernous sinus, uh, goes to the distal dural ring, enters the dura. We can see it coming up right here, comes up, uh, and then this is where it'll give up the ophthalmic and superior hypophyseal artery. You can see the superior hypophyseal there. Uh, this is very likely the ophthalmic artery, and it comes up, and then it it ends at in either the ACA going medially or the MCA going laterally. So you can see why if we have a, an obstruction of flow right here to our more distal segments, why um, there we get that that appearance on uh, an ischemic stroke because. Um, an infarct here really cuts off the whole supply. There's not a lot of contralateral flow right about here. Um, and you can see here, uh, the M1 segment uh, comes up uh, right here. So M1 comes up, it gives off the lenticulostriate arteries here. Uh, and then it comes into the sylvian fissure um, and it has the sylvian segment, the M2 segment, the M3 is the opercular segment. And then up here, M4, uh, we have the cortical segment. So the MCA is a hugely important uh, vessel for uh, cortical supply. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.